All right, I hope everyone's ready to die because today we're going to be creating a dice. That's the singular for dice. So add yourself a little cube, and we're going to put this cube right on this spot right here in the center of our uh, grid. That's going to make it our pivot. In order to do that, if we go into uh, object mode and W, you see that this we can move it, right? But I want to move it in a very specific spot. I want to put this point right here onto that corner. We can move our pivot by holding D, but it kind of goes everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this snap right here, snap two points, hold down D, and drag it right to that corner. Now let's turn off snap to points, let's turn on snap to grid, and we'll drag it right there. Now our die is going to be three centimeters, because your snap to grid is still there, you should be good, by three centimeters, by three centimeters, so I'll just go one, two, three. Make sure that that's a perfect cube, if you messed up it won't be. So now I'll turn my snaps off, and I'm going to turn this, if I hit three, that's high poly mode, it's a circle, I don't want that sphere. Let's go into our insert edge loop tool. Shift, sorry, go to edge mode, shift right click, insert edge loop, and double click on it. And we're going to set the number of edge loops to two. So we'll put some here, here, and here. So we now have a Rubik's cube. Get on to select mode get off of that, hit three, and you'll see eh, that's definitely dice-like, but I think that these need to come a little closer to, this, to the uh, edges here. So let's select both of these with shift in edge mode, double click, double click with shift, pull those out to maybe there. Let's double click, double click with shift, and make sure these are kind of squares right there as much as possible. Double click, hold down shift, double click, and there. And again, look for that square right there. Now let's hit three, and yep, yeah, that's starting to look like a die. All right, now uh, let's take this die right here, and we're gonna, instead of hitting three and one, we're gonna stay on one, and we're gonna actually push this button right here to smooth, and that gives us this. We might end up smoothing it again later, but I, I have a reason for smoothing it now. I want this little point right here in the center. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a polygon sphere. And this is a lot of polygons. Uh, if we go into the attribute editor and then we go to poly sphere right here, we can actually take this and maybe just tone it down a bit. Uh, you know what? Let's not worry about it. Let's keep it at 20. We'll just go high poly. Who cares? All right. I want to bring this into the center of this object. So again, I'll just click on my snap to point and push it right there on top. And you can see I'm looking for this point right there. It's a little hard to see, but let's get that out of the way. That point right here, this vertex. We want to push it there. Or sorry, that one. We want it to snap right there. So I'll go into object mode. And I'm snapping it to that vertex right there. So let's make that smaller. Just We want to be able to have three across. So I'm just trying to see here. I'm going to duplicate this. Does this give me room? Yeah, maybe a little tiny bit smaller. Oops. So whatever your size is, just make sure you can put three across. That works. So this is going to be our one. And all you got to know about a die is that uh, the opposite side always has, it, they add up to seven. So this plus the top are going to be seven, which means the bottom must be six. So I'm going to do a control D duplicate and I'm going to find this center right here, snap it to it. You can see that right there, it snaps right onto that. And then uh, because this is a fix, I am gonna 
we need to move it off to the side. So I'm going to turn my snaps off for now. And let's let's do this actually. Let's turn our movement snaps on to uh, set snaps to, and you just double click on the move to relative, and we'll say uh, 0.5. So this will go 0.5 centimeters. Turn off all these other snaps. And that'll go, I'm trying to think of it. I guess it goes pretty far. I'm not sure exactly. I think it's going to have to go all the way to the edge. Hmm. Let's try a duplicate. Uh, duplicate is control D. OK. So those feel a little too far away from the center. So and I feel like that'd be too much. So maybe I'll set this to 0 0.25, just to keep them evenly spaced. And let's just pull those in. All right, good. Now we're going to do the next one. So let's say two over here. So to control D duplicate. Two is just going to be that, control D, and that. Oops. OK, that looks about right. Is that? Just try to, try to keep it as symmetrical as possible. I think that's pretty close. Maybe I need to go with one. Or in. Yeah. OK. The other side is going to have five. Uh, uh, I'm going to keep those out. This is for five. I think I'm going to need them further apart. OK, so Control D, duplicate. I just like the two at the same time, because I'm going to use both of these. Um, and Control D. Oops. Pull this guy down here, control D, pull this one up here, control D, we want one dead center. Okay, now we just need three and four. For three, it's just three in a row, so I could take these guys and control D them. Hard part's rotating them because they're not going to rotate um, unless you group them. And if you want to get into grouping, you pull up this guy. Take, take them and you uh, middle mouse button click and drag. You can put them all together like that. And then click on this polysphere. And again, I need my snaps to rotate this to be 90. So I'm going to go into my rotation snaps and turn them onto 90 degrees relative. Get that where it needs to go. Cool. And if you want to ungroup them, you can then just uh, stick this in the middle right there, and it'll ungroup it with the middle mouse button. And then on the other side, we have that four. So I'll take these again, control D to duplicate, pull them out. And then uh, control D, control B. That looks good. Go into object mode. And I guess before we do this, I'm going to make this high poly again. I didn't want to do it earlier because I thought it might be hard to um, snap to those points if I had so many. Select everything. Make sure that you are not on camera base selection by double clicking. And we're going to do a shift right click, Boolean, difference. That's going to work. <clears throat> Let's try that again. Maybe, I think you can only do two at a time here. So click on this one, hold down shift, click on this one, right click, Boolean difference. Nope. Let's try again. Start with this one, then select that with shift, shift, right click, Boolean difference. There it is. Okay. So if we start with this one, I think we should be able to select all the other ones. Let's try it. Boolean difference. Yes. Start with this one. Shift, 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 right click, Boolean difference. J 
generally you don't want to use booleans uh, for video game stuff because it can cause some problems. But for this case, you know, I'm showing you. But I again, generally, it's to be avoided as much as you can. Boolean difference. And there we go. Let's see how this object looks. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to Z back now, and you can too. We'll do all that in one go next time. Uh, before I do that, though, I do want to make sure that all of these guys are a different material. And so I'm going to select them all with Shift, and I'm going to right click, assign new material, and I'll just pick this Lambert right here. And just set the color to black so I know that they're black. Now let's try that Boolean object mode. Start with this one. Shift, shift, shift. You can let go of shift when you're rotating. Boolean difference. Let's see if it keeps that black material on there. It does. So what does that get us? That gets us a full fledged, beautiful looking die. And that black material, we can change it on real to something black. So we've done it. Uh, now that I've gone high poly, my pivot's not quite where I want it to be. So I might come in and hold down D, D get into snap to point mode again, and just push that a little bit closer to that grid. Not super essential, but Nice. Uh, I also don't want it to be hovering above, so let me try that one more time. Let's try this point right here, I guess. That's as close as I can get it, because this is kind of a round object. And there. All right. Don't even worry about that part. It's just nitpicky. Um, cool. So you made yourself a very beautiful looking little die. And you can bring that into Unreal, and um, it will have two different materials in Unreal. Let's make sure we have our UV map done. Let's go to our UV editor and UV automatic this. And it'll lay it out like that. Those are the inside pieces, and these are the outside pieces. Now, we actually could... Nah, never mind. I'm not going to go there. It's fine like that. Okay. So I'm in object mode. I'm going to go to File, Export Selection. I'm going to choose an FBX file, uh, making sure my smoothing loop groups are selected. I'm going to go Static Mesh, SM underscore die. And put that somewhere. Make sure you know where you're putting it. I'm going to put it in my John Ginelli Documents folder. But if you're going to look for it later, you better know where you actually stuck it. Where's my documents? Seriously? Downloads, links, searches, contacts, OneDrive, Apple, Google Drive, Autodesk. That's weird. Oh, there's my documents, I guess. I don't know. Huh. All right, fine. I'll just put it in my downloads. And that's it. We can now bring it in Unreal.